Hello there, and uh, welcome back to <coughs> my vlog uh, with another poem. Um, you might see I've got a bit of a funny nose again at the moment, so uh, hopefully that won't put you off. But anyway, I'm back with another poem. It's part three of my epic poem. It's, it's not really epic, is it? Uh, it's just long. Uh, part three of my epic poem, I call it, still call it epic, uh, A Poker Adventure. Okay, um, so this poem, if you've not uh, sort of read the other parts, well, if you, if you look below there, I'll put some links in to the other two parts, part one and two. Uh, we're on part three, um, and then it's part four after that, and that's the last part. So, the point of the poem is to write an adventure story, but using sort of words and phrases from Pokemon and sort of slipping them in. And I also have to apologise, because the last time I lied, or the... I think it was last time. Yes, it was. I lied and said I only had one Pokemon t-shirt. Well, I was cleaning some stuff up, and I found I've got another one. Don't bother me, I'm catching Pokemon. So it's a Pokemon Go one. Um, anyway, on to the actual uh, poem. So, last time we left our uh, intrepid adventurers stuck in um, a boat. Okay, they were captured by pirates. They're put into the, the, the boat, into a, into a room with a, another man that they found there who was locked up. And um, they were trying to move some um, wooden slats that were, were hammered in and they couldn't move them to get out. So they're stuck there. So how are they going to get out? Um, well, that's revealed in part three. So part three is called Saviour of the Red Flames. Okay, so we've had green in the first one. We've had... Um, yellow in the second one, we've had red in this one. I wonder if you can guess what the last one's going to be, considering those are the three of the first four colours of Pokemon games. Um, green, yellow, that's the special Pikachu edition. Green, if you didn't realise, is the Japanese version of red. Uh, we've got red this time, so there's only one other option. Anyway, rather than me waffling on, let's get on with the poem and me reading the poem. Okay, so... This is A Poker Adventure Part 3, Saviour of the Red Flames. And remember, look out for those Pokemon words. Let me try, the old man said, standing up. I'm not as weak as I look. Misty and myself were about to stop him when we realised it would, it would not harm. We would be stuck here if he didn't try. So he might as well. The old man got himself into position, hands wedged in the gap and bent back. We heard a crack as if a fissure had opened up, opened up. And the old man stepped back, snapping the wood from the wall. Wow, you're strong, I said, whilst Misty added, indeedy, like one cool hipster. Not waiting to take the, wanting to take the plaudits, the old man threw the wood down and said, right, now we need a plan. All three of us sat down and talked about what to do next. As neither Misty nor me had seen much of the ship, we had no idea where the gap would take us. The old man, who told us his name was Brock, said he had seen around the galleon a little before being thrown in the room. He told us that the gap went into the hold and that from there we could get out onto the deck. He said he could use some rope and wood in the hold to rub together and create an ember. This could be used to set fire to the crates so they would burn up. Once done, we could charge onto deck, mass by the smoke, dive off the side and with a swift swim could make it back to land. Overall, the plan was a little wishy-washy, but it was the best we had. Let's go, I said and started to squeeze through the gap. Misty and Brock followed me, and soon we were surrounded by boxes. The hold was lit by one lowly lantern that rocked every time there was a gust of wind. There was no time to wait, though, so Brock got on with his task. I'm not sure it was in those crates, but as soon as Brock got the fire started, there was an eruption. A heat wave blasted over us, and we needed to dive to get out, to get out of its way. When we stood again, there was so much smoke, we were coughing and, coughing and wheezing. We would be burnt to a crisp if we stayed there, so we quickly headed for the steps and ran up to the deck past the vile plumes of smoke. This part of the plan had worked, though, as a smoke screen hid us from view. Oh no, Misty said, pointing over the side. The ship was moving, and there was no land to be seen. How would we escape, How would we escape now? Don't worry, Brooke said. A small bird, a fletchling that had recently left its nest, had landed on the railing. There must be land around here somewhere. We decided the best action was to move around the deck and see where the landmass was, so we could jump off at the right point. Breaking through the smoky mist, we saw a hubbub of, act hubbub of activity. Pirates ran this way and that, grabbing buckets of water and darting to, to the hold, 
In all the confusion, we thought we were safe, but then some pirates charged towards us, attacking us with a cat of nine tails. It was all I could do to dodge the attack. Brock stepped back, the nerves taking over, and he froze to the spot. In that time, Misty jumped in, sending a barrage of kicks at the sending a barrage of kicks at the pirates. She hit one on the shin, making him fall over whilst clutching his leg. I noticed another pirate move towards her, holding two cutlass cutlasses. He swung his dew blades at her head, hoping to slash her. All I could do was tackle Misty to get her out of the way. The blades sliced overhead as we toppled over the railing and plummeted into the sea below. I thought I heard another splash as we went under. When we returned to the surface, I noticed that Brock had managed to jump in as well. Not caring which direction we pointed, the three of us swam away from the boat. We did not stop until our stamina was depleted, bobbing gently in the waves. The galleon had not turned to follow us, the pirates too concerned with a raging fury of flames. Something was with us though, a sea creature. We hoped it was not dangerous. A strange head popped up. Misty smiled and said, It's just one of those, cow those sea cow things, a dugong. Misty went to stroke it. The creature seemed happy. She tried to a hug. The animal let her. The next thing we knew, Misty had climbed on its back. Come on, hop it. I think it wants to show us something. Brock and myself grumbled a little, but we realised that to cross the ocean we would need to ride on it. The speed was immense. With spray in our faces, we shot through the waves and saw, soon saw land ahead. The creature pulled up against some rocks that jotted from the sea. We could tell the dugong wa wanted us to go as it was arching its back. We climbed off the rocks and waved goodbye, thanking our newfound friend. He swam off into the sunset and we noticed it was already the end of another sunny day. However, none of us knew where we had been dropped and clouds were starting to build. It would get dark soon and the weather looked a bit manky. We would not need to do a rain dance to make the water fall from the sky. Brock suggested we find a place to hunker down for the night. Surely there were some trees nearby and bushes full of berries. The only option we had was to head up to the grass on the cliff and see what lay beyond. We scrambled up and came to a dusty path, stretching beyond where fields were stre stretching beyond were fields. Nothing that could be considered cover, but we had to move quickly. If the rain came, it would soak us if we were out in the open. In situations like this, people usually go right. Who are we to challenge such a universal concept? The, the walk down the path went on for miles. We heard a rumble from our stomachs. Our bodies ached. However, little tree cover could be found. No berries could be scavenged. Brock said, I'm so hungry. I could murder some instant noodles. That's when Misty got crabby and turned into hangry mode. Can you stop talking about food? The more you mention it, the more it reminds me how starving we are. I only said it once, Brock responded sullenly. Misty was about to shout something back when I noticed a wood up ahead through the gloom. Look, I cried, there are trees up ahead. Maybe we could get there before it rains. And we did. Just as we burst through the tree line, the heavens opened. We knew we would need to spend the night in the woods, so look for a place to haul up. At one point, three trees grew close together, grew close together, giving a thick canopy snow overhead. We were protected from the rain, so only needed to find food. Deciding to forage, we found a tiny mushroom, as well as a few big mushrooms. We were unsure if they were poison, if they would poison us, so we had to leave them. With the light almost gone and the forest now dark, we had to ignore the snarl of our bellies and get some sleep. Myself and Misty could not manage it on the hard ground, but when we, but we heard Brock snore after a few minutes. A moment later, my eyes shut open. A harsh sunlight almost blinded me. How I had managed to sleep, I do not know. It helped my mood, but not my hunger. As I sat up, I heard munching. Brock and Misty were tucking into sweet apples. Misty looked across and said, Look what, what Brock found. Do you want one? Three more apples were strewn on the ground. I took the, near, the one nearest me and bit into it. Ugh, I cried. I thought these would be sweet. This is a tart apple. Ours are nice, Misty said. Try this one. She threw me another apple. Luckily, this one was much tastier. After eating, we headed back to the path to continue on our route inland, hoping we would find somewhere we knew. Like the previous day, the morning was hot, so we were happy that a small stream ran down the side of the path and that on our right, the wood continued thus giving us a shadow chill if we, we stood there. At points, we stopped and drank from the stream, helping us to keep our spirits up. After a few hours walking, the terrain had not yet changed. We had hoped to come to a road or a small village. However, something did block our path. A large cow just stood there, staring at us. The beast was covered in dirt and appeared to be very angry. 
Misty stepped towards it, hoping to get it to move with kindness. She put a hand out for it to sniff and said, I'm going to call you Dust Ox. The cow did not appear to be happy, looking straight at Misty and dragging its hoof through the dirt on the path. If it decided to charge, it would tore us apart in seconds. Oh no. What's going to happen now? They've stuck behind a messy, dirty looking cow that's quite dusty. So it's called Dust Ox. Yeah. Hopefully you spied a few more of my uh, terrible sort of puns or bits shoehorned in there with Pokemon words. Uh, like I say, it's not the best poem I've written. I don't even think it's that amazing, but I'm quite proud that it's long and that I've kind of sneaked in lots of Pokemon words. So anyway, that's uh, part three of a poker adventure, uh, which is called, remember, Saviour of the Red Flames. Okay, so we've had red now, we've had yellow was the previous one. Sorry, we've had red now. We've had red. We've had, uh, what one did we have before? We had yellow and we've had green. So we've got one more colour left to go. Wonder what that could be. Um, and yeah, hopefully uh, you're enjoying it and you want to listen to the next part. Um, and if you do enjoy it and you do enjoy my poetry and things, you can like, sub subscribe. There's links down there to my poetry collection on Wattpad called Bad Poetry. You probably never want to read, which has some poems which I actually think are quite good. I'm not going to lie. A lot of them I think are rubbish, but quite a lot of them are quite good. Uh, it's also links to my twi Twitter stroke X account and uh, my uh, blog so you can find out more stuff that I'm doing. Um, so, yeah, feel free to like, subscribe, star on Wattpad. Leave me comments if you think things aren't quite working for you, don't like this or that. As long as it's said in a nice way, I don't mind a bit of critical, um, constructive, shall we say, constructive criticism. Um, but for now, I shall leave you there. That is the end of part three of A Poker Adventure. So a couple more poems coming out and then the final part. Will they get home? What will happen about the treasure that they have not got hold of, that they thought they might get hold of? Who knows? Anyway, until next time. Goodbye.